Okay, so it's time. I'll get going then, yeah? <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Great to have you with us uh, on this 22nd Osmo lecture. Uh, the second last lecture of the year. We'll have one more talk next week. So, uh, pleasure to have uh, Peter White with us today. Uh, Peter graduated in <clears throat> 1979 from Harvard University with a bachelor's and master's degrees in physics. He obtained his PhD in particle physics from Princeton University in 1985, and this was followed by postdoctoral work in theoretical physics at the State University of New York at Stony Brook, and in a research in mathematics at the Mathematical yeah. Research Institute in Berkeley. Then he spent four years as an assistant professor at Columbia, and currently he holds a permanent position in the mathematics department as a senior lecturer. Uh, apart from mathematical physics, Peter also has a varied and diverse research interests in quantum field theory, particle physics, and of late touching on gravity. And as I think everyone knows very well, Peter has been a very frank and honest critic of string theory and published this famous book, Not Even Wrong, in 2006. And he also writes a blog of the same name, so we are looking forward to a very interesting talk today titled The Space Time is Right-Handed. Peter, all yours, please. <clears throat> okay, Th thanks so much for the invitation. So, yeah, so, so let's see, actually, wait, let me, let me make sure if I can figure out how to get this, this guy to, ah, sorry. I have to figure, I have to figure out how to get this to work. Just a second. This is PDF, is it? It's a PDF, and then now yeah, is, let's, uh, up and down arrows should work, I think. Yeah, but that's um, there. There's some way to get. Sorry, what's the page? How do I get this to? Oh, the navigator. The navigator on the left is it? Yeah, but it just isn't now. One, two. What's the? What, what do I do? How do I just page? Hello? How do I just page? How do I just page this thing? Let's see. Um, ah. Oh, there we go. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay, now I think we're we're good. Let me just get this. Okay, I, I, is that all right? Yeah, okay. yeah. You would like okay. to see okay. the first slide also? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's let's start again. Okay. Here we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Thank so so the you. title is space time is right handed, and I'll I'll just there there this thing automatically gives a a summary. But so so um, what I'm going to do is spend a lot of time just talking just about vectors and spinners in four dimensions. Um, four complex dimensions and the various real forms. This is a uh, anyway. So, so this, so this is important for background of what I'm trying to talk about. And then I'm gonna, the the main new idea here is an alternative to the usual way that you relate Euclidean and Minkowski spinners and vectors. So an alternative to what you would usually call Rick rotation in that case. And then I'll say quickly a bit about how how to think about this in terms of twister geometry instead of spinner geometry. And then um, give uh, just very quickly a bit about what I'm trying to do, what I hope this gives you in terms of new ideas about unification. And this is something if we if you do have a long discussion section, maybe I can say a lot more about about that there. <laughs> OK, so then, oh, in terms of so these slides, if you um, want to look at these slides, there's a copy on my website right right now. You can look at those. The. Um, what I'm talking about is closely related to this kind of short paper that I wrote recently with the same title, and it's on the archive. Um, and I'm in the middle, I'm trying to write down a more detailed version with, a, and as I write it, I keep kind of learning more and slightly changing perspective. And it, there, this is all related to older ideas about unification from that I first started writing about a few years ago on, about um, think, thinking from that, from the point of view, Euclidean um, twisters in Euclidean space time. And that's also on the archive. Okay. So now just to, to get started, so the maybe the, the most concrete way of getting started is kind of what what uh, I really think is the best way of actually writing down um, vectors in Minkowski space time and understanding how they behave under Lorentz symmetries, which is to represent vectors as Hermitian matrices uh, in, in this way. And then the inner product is just the the determinant. Um, the inner products, I mean, the length squared is just the inner product up to a, 
a minus sign and depending on convention and that it's given by that ah sorry wrong one okay and so now if you want to know how the Lorenz group acts the it's um in terms of the Lorenz group SL2C which you can also think of as the double cover of the Lorenz group SO31 just acting on vectors so it acts on um this group acts on Minkowski space-time in this when when you've represented it this way by um acting on on the left and right where on the right you act by the uh by by the by the adjoint and what so what this does is this this particular I should say yeah so, so so this particular form ensures that you take um Hermitian matrices to Hermitian matrices so so you just get the get just acts on Minkowski space time and it preserve it preserves the inner product because these are things with the by determinant one so this is standard idea okay now if you want to <clears throat> work rotate so so work rotation is <clears throat> fundamentally the idea that your quantum theory or quantum theory field theory or even your quantum quantum theory is in many ways ill-defined if you work in in um in the in the usual time but if you make a a analytic continuation from from time to to imaginary purely imaginary time this makes this inner product positive definite and things become much more well defined now if you um th this this also has an interesting characteristic that it makes instead of thinking of just by two by two complex matrices it's often a good idea to think about quaternions but you can go back and forth between uh quaternions and two by two complex matrices with with this in this this is one way to do it and then if you look at wick rotated Hermitian matrices and you multiply by minus i in this um isomorphism you you, you get that the you, you get just the quaternion so you have kind of two ways of thinking so you can think of once you've wick rotated these two by two matrices that you're dealing with are you should maybe think of them as quaternions we'll see and then so then now from, from once you've done this and if you think of them in terms of quaternions you can also stand, understand very nicely what the analog of the Lorentz group is the analog of the Lorentz group and for real dimensions with a standard inner product is to is the group um spin four of a it's kind of two copies of of SU2 and these act on on your Euclidean space-time represented as quaternions by by left independent left and right multiplications um and so this the group the group SU2 is also the group uh you know, SP1 of uh unit length quaternions so if you if you if you do this you don't change the the length of of the quaternion and so 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 spin four is the the wick rotated Lorentz group okay now so now so so all of this story is really your what we're all th these are two different real forms of of complex space time so we want to think think about what complex space time is and from this point of view complex space time is the complexification of you know either the quaternions or two or permission matrices and if you complexify either one of these you 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 get the just the algebra of two of two by two um of all two by two complex matrices and and you can use the the inner pro and you can use the same inner product minus the determinant and now it's preserved by uh, a larger group which is you know independent left and right multiplications by by two different sl2c's and so this is telling you that the the complex spin group the if you the, the the thing that's that's acting on um complex space time preserving the the standard inner product is uh two copies of sl2c which i'll call a, a left and a right one now so so this complexification then has so the complex story is actually is is very simple but what's it's, it's a little bit what happens then is that there's three different real forms there's three different stories that you can complexify to get the same complex space-time story and the, the first of these is um 
it, it is one that we doesn't seem to be so interesting physically, but in term, but I think mathematically, it's it's the it's the simplest possible real form, and 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 this is just to it's the, everywhere you were using complex numbers, um, just use real numbers, and when you complexify, you're just changing all of your entries of all your matrices and all your coordinates from real to complex, and so this is just you just take matrices of, of, of this particular form. There's an inner product with two minus signs and two plus signs, so it has signature two two, and you can do independent left and right multiplications now by um, determinant <clears throat> determinant one real matrices, so so SL two R. So the the spin group in signature two two is um, two copies of of, of SL two R. These in, independent left and right multiplications. Okay, then this the second <clears throat> the second real form is the Minkowski one that we were talking about before. So this is the three one signature inner product, it, and, it's and the, so you, and it's preserved by the spin three one is SL two C, and this is the story we had above. And similarly for um the, the four zero uh, I am real form, and that's the that's the Euclidean one, and that's. And so spin four zero is these two SU2. So the, these two stories are what we talked about a little bit earlier. Hi, thank you. Okay. okay. So now so so now what what's so, so that's the story about vectors in vectors in complex uh, space time and the three possible real forms. But um what what about spinners? So wh where things get much more, more complicated is thinking about you know the the what these real forms are for spinners. So this is what I want to talk about for a while here. So the the, the standard way to, to to do this is to um to say that well that complex space time is the to, to think of complex space time as a tensor product of, of two copies of of C of of C two. So 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 in in other words, as a representation of this complexified spin group the, the two sl2 c's um the, the, this, this this is first this is a tensor product for representation of, of this group and the first factor here you have to watch out the note i should probably use a better notation because here when i say s sub s sub l i mean a representation of of spin 4 c which is the defining one on the the left-handed copy of sl2 c and is trivial on the right-handed copy of sl2 c so here you should think of as S sub L is not just a representation of SL two C, but but of the of the of the product. It's just trivial on one factor. And now if you want, so now you think of um, space time as a tensor product representation of of two representations of spin four C, this uh, this left handed one that I've just talked about, and then a right handed one where you just flip the what I said about right and left. Okay. And then, if you think about what we were this this matrix representation as elements of two by two complex matrices that I started with, that's just the expression in in coordinates of, of the fact that complex space time vectors are you know they're uh, if you have a tensor product, you can think of the tensor product as the, the first factor tensor you know, a, a, as maps from the dual of the of the set of, of one factor to the um, to the other factor. So you, this is kind of at telling you that well, at, from a more abstract point of view, all those matrices I was talking about, you really should think of them as complex linear maps from the dual of of this to of, of the right-handed spinners to the left-handed spinners. Okay, so let's go. Um, okay, now, so so what happens? Let's go to the signature two two. Does he? And there again, you know, everything is is very straightforward. Um, so the real form for spinners is is that the S and L are just real, this the standard real two two dimensional representations of of S L two R and then you know with and then you make representations anyway anyway and, and then the let's see so the uh, and then the real the real two two signature space time is just the tensor pro product of these things again you know be, taking care to say that one of them is what i really mean here is the real representation of one of these times the the real defining representation of one of these times the trivial representation of the other 
<laughs> okay, so now, but th things get much the the real forms for spinners in Euclidean and McCaskey space time are are actually much trickier, and this is the source of all this of all this interest and trouble and maybe opportunity. But the so you know if you look if you looked at, at at vectors, the vectors were always what you would call a real representation. But in the if you go away from the two two signature case, the spinners are no longer a real representation. And now, and what I mean by this, so you, you have to go back to, to 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 this kind of classification of of how you think about representations of a real Lie group. So um, normally, when we do representation theory of Lie groups, we think about representations on complex vex complex vector spaces. But if you try and think about these as the question of you know what are not just the complex representations of a real real Lie group, but what are the real representations? Well, one way to think about it is to 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 think about the complex representations, but realize that you no longer have um I mean Schur's lemma is now a bit different. So you you have um you know over over the reals you can have things that have uh, you know automorphisms that are real quaternionic or complex, not just complex. And so what you do is you say that um, you you to think about real representations of a of a of a real Lie group. You can think about complex re representations, representations on a complex vector space. But then you have kind of three possibilities, and the first possibility is a real representation in the sense that the um it, it, it's the complex it's the complexification of of a, a representation on a real vector space. And what you, the way you recognize that when you're dealing with these complex representations is by noticing that you, you, you there's a conjugation, there's some kind of um, involution sigma that if you square it, you, and it gives you one, and then its fixed points are this real subspace. So this is the way to think about real rep representations on real vector spaces, but but to, but when you're working with the complexes. But then, the, 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 but then the problem is there are other possibilities, and the other po one possibility is that you, you may not have, uh, you know, an antilinear um, sigma square sigma who squares to one, but you may have an antilinear sigma that squares to minus one, and these are called quaternion, well, quaternion representations. Because then, I mean, you you thought you had a complex representation, and and you do, you thought you had a representation over the complexes, and you do, you have an action of i. But you also have an action, an antilinear map that squares to minus one, and you can think of that as J. And then, you know, but with the I and J, you also get K. So you have an action of the quaternions on this. So this vector space that you thought was just a complex vector space is actually a quaternionic vector space. So you have, so th 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 this could this could happen. And then the other thing that can happen is that it is is neither of the above that you have some representations which which are kind of inherently complex, so which we'll call complex rep representations in this language, and they're neither real or quaternionic. But in, in this case, um, one thing that happens is that the one way of recognizing this is that the, the, the representation on V and the conjugate representation, where you just t take all of your um, representation matrices and, and conjugate them, that that's not an, not an equivalent representation. So in in the first two cases, for real and quaternionic representations, the V and its conjugate are are unitarily are, are equivalent representations, um, but that that's not true in in this complex case. So you have this kind of threefold division of when you start thinking about real re, you know, real representation theory, and you you think of your groups as real Lie groups, and this is what we need to do when we're thinking about about real forms when we're thinking about Euclidean and Minkowski space, not just complex space time. Okay, so 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 let's see what happens in the Euclidean case. So for the Euclidean real form, remember the spin four was two SU twos, but spin, spinners are quater are you know the representation is on C two, but they're they're quaternionic, so that you always have a um. On you know as representations of SU two, they're equivalent to their conjugates, and you have an antilinear map 
that squares to minus one. So spinners in Euclidean space are inherently really quaternionic. You really are. This really is SP1 cross SP1 um, unit quaternions. And what they're acting on is the C2 that they're acting on is it has a quaternionic structure. Let's see. Um, so now, but so so there so there's no there's no real structure on these things. The, these sp spinners and for spin four are not complexifications of some real representation. But if you take if you take the tensor product of these things, um, and you know take the tensor product and and build and and then then you do have a real representation on the tensor product because you're taking the tensor product of these two things that square to minus one and. And so they're squaring to, to one on, on complex vectors if you build them this way, then uh, Euclidean space-time, you know, is 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 a real representation. It's the sigma invariant subspace of this complex, of this usual complex space-time. And and again, so and then again, again, so choosing coordinate as coordinates on the spinners, you get you can identify the space-time with um matrices of this form for for the x x is all real and th this is also kind of what i started with earlier okay and then now, so there's one kind of really important thing to notice about this thing is that it's it has kind of very funny so it, it's not hermitian or anti-hermitian so the putting this i in front of the x sub zero has kind of has uh, has, has has wrecked hermeticity or anti-hermeticity so um so so so, con so conjugation is really going to behave differently in uh in euclidean space time so taking the hermitian adjoint of this thing leave you know is leaves the space leaves the spatial subspace invariant so purely purely spatial vectors are are hermitian matrices but but it, it reflects in the time direction so there's so so note that in this um in Euclidean space time this the, the there is a there is a conjugation and it's and it's a real it's a real representation it's a real representation but it's it, it's the conjugation flips time to minus time okay okay so now what happens in the usual Min Minkowski space time story well here spin 3 1 is sl2c and this the spinner representations of slt sl2c are you know as real representations are what we call are co are complex that there's really you have this the standard one and you have its conjugate representation and they're inequivalent so so s is not there is no sigma sl2c um in varying kind of, kind of anti-linear map sigma that's going to square to minus one or one these things are not, you know, they're not the complexification of anything real. They're not quaternionic, but and and but and S and its conjugate representation are, you know, inequivalent representations. They're two different things. So this is um, to press L two C. Okay, but now it, so if, so what people do if you want to get a, a real representation of S L two C, you have to do something funny. Um, you have to uh, well, but but you you can do it. One thing you can do is is put together S and 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 its conjugate, and and then then you have a, a four dimensional complex representation, which is the sum sum of the two. And then you 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 take you take a a conjugation which, which um, conjugates the spinner coordinates, but also interchanges the two factors. Okay. So it, it, and and then you can get something that satisfies. That's anti-linear and satisfies sigma squared is equal to one, and so so then this this four-dimensional complex <clears throat> sum is the complexification of a four-dimensional real representation, and so, so this is the story of the Majorana representation. But um, but to get the Majorana representation, you have to kind of uh, you you have to kind of du double. Your degrees of freedom you have to have take both s and, and and its conjugate and you have to use this kind of tricky sigma which is going to not just conjugate things but also interchange the two factors 
and then but it, and, and this is what, if if then what happens on complex space time if you take it to be if you take it to be this tensor product of s tensored with its conjugate again that's so that's a four co four complex dimensional object and then same kind of conjugation here with the same kind of properties interchanging s and s conjugate if you apply it to this tensor product again you, you get a real structure for this complex tensor product and it picks out the real minkowski space time so this is just the story we started with it mil real minkowski space time is the hermitian matrices if you if you if you choose coordinates and work in terms of matrices okay so now what is how are you going to work rotate between um so okay so so what's the usual way to rick rotate between vectors and then spinners well as i said so what what you do is you you take complexified space time to be this 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 product of something that's uh a be that's a representation of this product group but it's it's the defining representation on the left factor trivial on the right factor and you take the tensor product of that representation with one that has the opposite properties. It's trivial on left, um, defining on right. So, so that's your complexified space time. And now, what about real factors? So, the, the oh, so 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 the nice thing about this is that this representation is is a holomorphic representation. So the you know a a representation. Of this kind gives you maps from SL2C from from the group, which is a which is a this, this complex group, to um, to matrices if you like, or to, to to linear maps. And these these rep representation maps are these homomorphisms are, um, are are holomorphic maps. So this is so you get a I would say that this is a um, this is a holomorphic. This is a holomorphic representation. This is this guy is a holomorphic representation, and so so then you can you can use this to do analytic continuation between Minkowski and Euclidean, and this is what people normally try to do. And so if you try to analytically continue between the various real forms, the first the first thing that happens is um, for Minkowski space, in order to get this kind of previous, um, let's see, in, in order to get this previous. Story, story, story to work out. What you have to do is you have to um, to think of the Minkowski SL two C as embedded as a real subspace of the complexified group, which is the this product group, but embedded you know as this as this conjugate diagonal in this way. And then this holomorphic representation, if you restrict it um, down to this conjugate diagonal, it, it's the um, it gives us action on the on, on the real Minkowski subspace of the tensor product. Okay. So that's the usual story. But 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 this is what's really confusing about this. So so then then you use this analytic continuation to go to Euclidean space time. But the problem is that you know the real forms of these spinners in, in Minkowski and Euclidean space time are completely different. So you have you have two problems that people typically worry about. One is that the whole Majorana sp spinner doesn't business doesn't work because you know while in in Minkowski space time you could you could put a real structure on on this sum here if you, in, instead if you if you oh sorry, sorry this is a this is a typo here so so this should say Euclidean so if you go to Euclidean space time and look look at and look at this guy you're going to get a um it's going to have a quaternionic structure not a real structure. And there's another problem, which, you know, I, I think has gotten way too little attention. I mean, I for it, the only textbook I know that mentions it is um, um, Pierre Ramon's textbook. Is that if if you actually try and write down the theory of of a single free vial spinner in Euclidean space time, you can do it very easily in Minkowski space time. It's very simple and it's a very nice expression. But if you try and do that and, and analytically continue that story. To um, to Euclidean space, it, it it really doesn't work because in um. In the Euclidean space time, you know vectors are in this tensor product of left and right things, and so you need two kinds of chiral spinner field, 
in the um you really can in McCaskey based space time your theory of a of a vile spinner is really just a it's the vile spinner and 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 it's conjugate but that's but everything can be written in terms of the vial spinner in Euclidean space time you really have <laughs> there's two different things both both and and you need both sl2c's so you can't actually you find you can't actually do you can, I mean that there is there's really kind of no way no way to write down a, a simple theory in Euclidean space time of a of a chiral spinner field the single chiral spinner field you have to kind of introduce both of them and so the usual way to to, to handle these problems is uh is there's always <clears throat> this kind of doubling of degrees of freedom that people do when it, when you the idea is when you go to the Euclidean theory you can try and you can try and do the things which you, you need to do what you expect to be able to do but if you're going to do them you have to double the number of degrees of freedom you have to to go from not just s plus but but s plus a a separate degree of freedom a conjugate degree of freedom and that conjugate degree of freedom in Minkowski space is no longer going to be you know the conjugation no longer works it's now going to be an independent degree of freedom so you see these very mystifying statements about how you know you can you can do spinners in euclidean theory you just have to realize that s conjugate no longer means conjugate it means it's something completely different and we're mysteriously using the conjugate um notation to which gets very confusing so that's the usual story okay so now so now this is what i, what I mainly want to talk about is a um an, an, al an alternative theory an alternative idea about how how to relate these two things which which doesn't which and i guess what i think of, as i think about this more and more I, as i realize that this is actually quite quite different in that it doesn't um it really doesn't involve analytic continuation in the same way so this is a it, this is going to be a kind of a notion of wick rotation which 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 isn't really going through analytic continuation in the way that this previous story was so now but now so the basic idea is this so what you do is you take the Lorentz group to, to be not not this conjugate diagonal in the complexified Lorentz group but but just just one factor let's say the right-handed factor so you're going to think so the it's a, it's a different you know if you're um if you're just in Minkowski space time you're not going to see any difference but if you're if the if you the way this acts on complex space time is you know is going to be is is something different it's got a um so you, so you're no longer the conjugate diagonal inside this product you're just one factor and if you want and and you you can do just what you did before but but just just use one factor use one of the c2s and you know take the take the tensor product of of the of this representation and its conjugate representation you get a complex representation and you know the real Minkowski space time is the Hermitian things in here but now now you're just you're, you're just using one of you're just using one of the um so, so now now when you when you conjugate you're not flipping right and left right and left-handed factors you're just you're, you're just sticking everything is happening on 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 the one factor there's only one sl2c you don't have to understand this conjugation by by flipping the two by by using two two both sl2r's a, a right-handed and left-handed one and, and having a conjugation that relates them so so what happens here now to the sl2c the left sl2c factor is that it, it just acts trivially on space-time so it, it's no longer a space-time symmetry so it is so the complex the complex space-time is now I mean the reason I'm saying that space-time is right-handed is is exactly this the complex space-time in this point of view is just a representation of sl2cr it's just and right-handed in, in that sense it, it the let what I would call left-handed factor in the complex um Lorentz group it, it acts purely trivially okay so then um and I said so it, it, <clears throat> if you refuse to think about the complexification or about Euclidean space-time you know no, nothing is has changed this, this is just this this is just the same story just remove all the R's from 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 the story and it's the same as the earlier story but if you think it's interesting if you think it's important to 
to look at the complexification or to be able and, and, and try and or it's important to look at the Euclidean space time, then then this is something very different. And and it it's very, very different if you ask that now what happens on on Euclidean space time. So if you so remember, so on, on Euclidean on Euclidean space time, uh, again, remember that the 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 left SL2C wasn't doing anything. The only thing that's doing something is the right SL2C. And then under and, and if if you look, so there's the the right-handed SU2 of the you know of the spin four zero of the the Euclidean um spin group uh is is now trivially uh, trivial on SU2 left, and the SU2 right representation is the you know, as a complex space, complex vector space is the tensor product of two C2s. There's the there's the right, there's the defining rep representation of SU2 and its conjugate. But for SU2, the conjugate representation and the representation itself are actually equivalent. So there, there's so you you don't you don't that this is really the same thing as taking the tensor product of two of just two spin of just two spinner representations of SU2. And you know what happens if you take two tensor product of two spin one half particles, you get you get you get a you get a, a four-dimensional space which has a which is a you know a trivial spin zero, if you like, component and a three-dimensional spin one component. Okay, this is and and so 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 this complex four-dimensional representation is a complex is a one-dimensional trivial representation and a three and a three-dimensional complex vector vector representation. And these things are um and 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 and, you know, and this is this is a real representation, the tensor pro this tensor product. And so it's just the complexification of um you know of of a four real dimensional representation where you've got one direction that's invariant under the SU2 and the other that 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 where it, it acts by rotations, by spatial rotations. So you've got Anyway, so, so 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 this is a um so in in this you know if you do this wick rotate this 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 notion of wick rotation you get something Euclidean space time is something really quite different than you expected <laughs> it's got a distinguished direction and only half of the spin four symmetry is acting non trivially on it and I think that this is one reason I think people I think there's one or two places in literature when I was looking at stories about you know people thinking about work rotation of spinners where they kind of people point out that yeah you can't um when you when you say that you can't that you can't do you can't do euclidean spinners of certain kinds that don't exist when it, you have to kind of make an assumption that you're not getting uh that you're getting the usual spin four action on c4 um if, if you have this action that this kind of avoids um the kind of problem is that we're forcing people into uh into thinking about Euclidean spinners in, in uh, with this doubling. Okay, okay. So now, what? Uh, so, so I, I want to argue that this um, weird geometry with this kind of dis distinguished direction fits in very, very well with what happens if you try and do Euclidean quantum field theory. So, <clears throat> one one thing about why I got interested in this stuff and writing papers about it recently was I, I finally started to understand that Euclidean quantum field theory is actually weirdly, is actually a very, very different beast than Minkowski quantum field theory. And um, so if you're in trying to do Euclidean quantum field theory, and you always have this problem that, you know, you, you ultimately want to relate this to to physical Minkowski space time. And there is, there is no way of doing that. To do that, you have to just you have to do something, and that does some that something is always going to be equivalent <clears throat> to choosing a distinguished imaginary time direction. And then what you get, you can then construct the physical state space. This is this Osterwald Schroeder construction by using reflection in the imaginary time direction. As we saw earlier, um, in the way we're thinking of things, the the Minkowski conjugation. Permission conjugation of matrices is exactly the Osterwalder Schwalder reflection in imaginary time. So the Minkowski um, reality property is showing up as a non-trivial reflection property in, um, in 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 Euclidean space time and and the existence of, of a distinguished direction. 
Okay. And so in the, <clears throat> when everybody writes down, uh, yeah, the, the story of Minkowski quantum field theory, you, you, there's no need to choose a time direction. It's very, it's very easy to write it down in various, uh, Lorentz SL2C invariant forms. But if it, it but if, if you want to really, um, if you want to use Euclidean quantum field theory and you don't want to just do statistical mechanics with it, you want to relate it to a real, uh, to, to real time theory, you have to, um, you, you have to choose this, this direction. And so, and, and, and again, the differ difference here is that in the usual geometry of Euclidean space time, <coughs> spatial rotations are just the diagonal subgroup of the two SU2s. Here, the spatial rotations are identified with SU2R with just one fact. So you're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing something very strange with the Euclidean space-time geometry here, which I'm kind of only beginning to kind of come completely come to grips with. Okay, so now just very quickly, I think <clears throat> I kind of started thinking about being motivated a lot of this by twister theories. I wanted to maybe quickly say how some of this looks from the point of view of twister theory. Um, and if I think I'm, I'll probably just I'll just say this very quickly. So if you've seen twister theory before, maybe this will be helpful. If you haven't seen twister theory, this may just be confusing, but maybe it'll give you some an idea about <clears throat> one way to think about twister theory that's natural from this point of view. But um, so so Penrose Penrose's first proposal was in '67, and this this has a lot of really wonderful properties. But one of for me one of the most interesting ones is that when you look at twister geometry, you you naturally are getting actually not Euclidean or Minkowski based space time, but you're actually getting the complexification of them. That's that's where things are really simple, and so it it provides a, a beautiful place to think of this story of analytic continuation. And it also, um, the conformal geometry, the conformal symmetry of four dimensions becomes very easily understood this, this way. Um, and so you, so what you should think of the, what this twister geometry is providing you is not your usual space time, but a conformal compactification of it. So in the Euclidean space time, uh, S4 instead of R4. And, but, but most discussions of twister theory that physicists look at focus on the Minkowski version. So I'm interested in the Euclidean version, how it's related to the Minkowski version. So maybe this here's a, a quick discussion of this. Um, so in twister theory, the this fundamental object is a twister space, which is which is C4, or it's often useful to think not just in, about the C4, but about the complex lines in the C4, so, so CP3. I'll call that twister space T, projective root, Twister space PT. Then, <clears throat> so then complex space time again compactified is just is just all the possible C twos inside the C four that go through the origin. So it's this, it's the it's what's known as the Grassmannian, um, the two four Grassmannian of possible C um, two subspaces of C four. And in in this point of view, uh, right handed spinners are tautological. So the spinner space at a point is just exactly the space-time point. The space-time point is a C2. Well, that C2 is the spinner space at that space-time point. So, and, and just a warning, I realize when I'm, the way I'm saying this here, I've kind of flipped things by a duel from the way when I was saying things in the spinner space. So I have to do that. I have to, should redo that more carefully, but, but ignoring that, um, the, this is, I mean, to, to me, one of the most glorious things about this ideas of twisters is that it makes spinners completely tautological. At least it makes right-handed spinners completely tautological. And and it's also very, the, the construction is kind of, uh, you know, not chiral invariant. I mean, you're going to treat right-handed spinners and left-handed spinners are, are unlike in the usual way of thinking about spinners, they're, 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 they're different objects. And only and one of them is to, is is giving you, telling you what it is is a space time point. So left handed spinners are now something different. And uh, one way of thinking about them is that they're the quotient of, um, if you take the quotient of the of twister space and mod though the right handed spinners, you get the the left handed spinner space. Um, there are various other ways of thinking about this and. 
thinking in terms of uh, you know dual twisters or dual or dual Grossmannians. There are a lot of other ways of, of saying this. <clears throat> but now, if you look at if you think about linear maps from one kind of spinners to the other at a, at a point given by, by one spinner, so so this is the the way we were we were thinking about vectors. They're now kind of tangent vectors at this point. They're um. The, their linear maps from the dual to, to anyway so this is where i messed up the duality um they're 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 the fi they're actually the fi they're complex linear and, and they're the, they're the fiber of the whole morphic tangent bundle of this grassmannian which i also just changed notation for but so so the the grassmannian is a complex manifold it's got a it, it has all sorts of nice properties of a complex manifold it has a a holomorphic tangent bundle and that's that's the kind of usual thing that um we're, we're, we think of where you put a right and left-handed spinners together by take you take a tensor product and define vectors well that's that that's you're, you're looking at the holomorphic tangent bundle and corresponds to the fact that you, you're getting a holomorphic representation of this of sl2c cross sl2c and the complex conformal group is the um is just the linear maps on on the twister space and this can be and you can think of these as spinner as spinners in six dimensions okay so now what are the real forms of this twister geometry well there again there's it's just like in the spinner case there's kind of three real forms well there's the there's the conformal there if you just wherever you saw complex things you made them real you get the the real graspiani and a real two planes and r4 and sl4r acts on it and that's actually the that's actually the spin group in signature th it's the six dimensional spin group in signature three three but the but that's the one we're not interested in the one we're interested in are the uh the euclidean one so compactified euclidean space time um the the group that, that acts on it is it, it, it's quaternion it's a quaternionic construction it's um and the, the compactification you can think of as projective quaternionic lines in um so so twister space is getting identified with h2 with two quaternions and um the space time is you know it's all the it's no longer grassmannian but it, it, it's just um quaternionic lines in, in, in quaternionic two space and sl2h is acting on this as a conformal group and that's that's the six dimensional spin group in signature five one okay and then the the conform the conformal group and, and this is what when, when you're doing trying to do minkowski space time twister geometry this is the crucial thing you use is that the you have to you have a a conformal group which is a special unitary group in signature 2 2 it's the six dimensional spin group of signature 4 2 and it acts on compactified Minkowski space time which you know as a manifold as a manifold that's like s3 cross s1 instead of s4 but it but okay okay so okay so I guess I'll say I'll just this is a, a bit more of what I was already saying before is that yeah so the twister space is a quaternion representation so so the euclidean real form um is is this this is more or less what i'd already think i'd already s said this before and and there's a nice kind of picture just to say a bit more about understand what's going on here there's a nice picture about the relationship between this overall complex story in cp3 with cp3 the projective twister space there's a projection down to s4 and the, the map takes a complex line in C4 to the quaternionic line in S in HP1 or S4. And there's a um anyway, there, there's it's, it's a good it's a very good idea maybe to have a picture to, to think about is that really what's happening here is that so projective twister space is CP3, S4 is just a um is a four is a four sphere. Each point in the four sphere, you have a it, there, there, there's a, there's a CP one up in CP three. There's a there's a complex projective line, or if you want, you can think of this as a, as a C two in, um, in 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 C four. And maybe the the one thing that 
so, so, so this is kind of a standard picture of people who do um, twister theory and mm -hmm. um, and you and you in Euclidean signature. But the one thing that we're going to be interested in is, is that we actually we, we actually have uh, we're going to be interested in in the fact that we have a, a relationship to the Tchaikovsky space time. So there's going to be a there's going to be a, a an imaginary time zero kind of subspace, or if you like, there's going to be a, a a distinguished equator of, of S4, that's going to be the purely spatial S3. So that's kind of one piece of structure that people who do Euclidean twisters don't normally think about but that we've got. But now, um, oh, and, and this is just, a, again, a relationship to, to spinners, as you can, you can now think in this case of PT as the projective spin bundle um, of, of S, of, of, so the, these, these, you, your S four ha, ha, has 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 a spinner bundle of, and and this this PT is just the the projective spin bundle, and the the fiber at a point is the CP one. It's just the 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 um the, the complex lines in your spinner space. And this anyway, th this is something that becomes important when in other things I'm doing, but I just wanted to mention this here is that that this um. You can then think of this PT as the bundle of complex structures on S four, and then and 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 do this. Okay, and, and maybe I, I should go. This this was just from anyway. So so this is this is how this gets interesting, and and for and it works for it. You can do something like this for a much more general Ramanian manifold, just using the projective spinner bundle, and then. Anyway, so so this is the the generalization used by mathematicians trying to do this Ramanian geometry using holomorphic methods. But now to get back to the Minkowski space time case, um, well, just as in the spinner case, so Minkowski, there's a real there's a Minkowski real form of Fister theory, but it's neither real nor quaternionic. And so if you wanted, you know, to 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 get a real story, to get a real a conjugation, you can't just use twister space, but you have to introduce conjugate twister space, and um, the conjugation then gives you a, a two two this two two signature Hermitian form on C four, and th this is and, and this is where you, and this is the group of things that the group of SL four C that preserves that is your SU two two, and compactified Minkowski space time is then. The subspace of the C twos and C four on, on which this Hermitian form is is zero, and this is acted on by the, by, by this Minkowski formal group, and um, now the uh, you get a, again you get a CP one in the projective twister space corresponding to a point in Minkowski space, and this has a has a beautiful kind of physical interpretation as the kind of celestial sphere of light rays through this point through through the point, so it's kind of what you see when you open your eyes is that that S two corresponding to to the point where you are in space time, and so there's a so maybe so, so so let me give a kind of a picture a picture of what's happening. What's happening in the the projective the projective twister space um, now ha, ha, has a, a subspace where this phi is is zero and 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 general. Complex lines, general project CP ones in here correspond to points in complexified Minkowski space, but not necessarily. And if, if they're in, in real Minkowski space, they lie in here. But now, unlike and if they um, the, the, so so this N five in in some sense is the uh, the inverse Im image in in this in this other picture back here of that um. Uh, 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 of the diagonal, if you if you look in and what 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 goes down to the diagonal up here, it's that n five, and um and and points in Minkowski space correspond to CP ones in there, and they they intersect when they're light 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 connected, and anyway, there, there's a beautiful story about that. Okay, but now, so so what what is what from this point of view, what, what's happening in Twister space about? This alternative um, wick rotation is that uh, is that is that we're we're not going to use the usual holomorphic tangent bundle of the Grassmannian, so we're going to instead take the tangent space to be a non-holomorphic bundle. It's a holomorphic bundle with a fiber the 
you know the um the tautological the tautological bundle and tensored with it with its conjugate but if, if you restrict to the um you know if you restrict to minkowski space time this is just the usual tangent bundle and restricted to um to 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 to, to hp1 or to s4 to the euclidean <clears throat> Space time. It, it, it's now this kind of weird new notion of Euclidean geometry, which we have. It, it's now got a Euclidean direct, it's got a distinguished direction. Okay, so maybe, maybe, so, so this is really kind of the, the main points that I wanted to, wanted to explain this new picture today. So just, and then I can just say a few words about what, you know, what, <laughs> what, what you can do with this, why I think this provides an interesting, um, New per, new perspective on, on how to think about unification and how to think about um, kind of the, the, the space time physics. Well, and this is I, I say a bit more in this this recent kind of short paper that it, it's kind of it's it's very remarkable that if you look at the at the different terms in the standard model and in gravity, you actually can they're they're normally written down in some kind of parity invariant way in some parity invariant language using standard vectors and um right right and left-handed spinners but you don't if you look at them carefully you realize you, you don't these are the ones that show up in the standard model they're kind of special fields that they don't you, they actually are things that can be expressed just using the right-handed spinner fields and so the um part of it is this the story of the standard way spinners are often introduced in physics textbooks is in a parity invariant way that you want to use in QED, but these are you can build these things out out of out of chiral out of chiral spinners and their um and their conjugates. So, you know, the the, the story of spinners is very much a, a chiral story. And that can be written purely in, in right-handed terms. And the in the Yang Mills um kind of gauge field dynamics is also kind of kind of interesting that normally you write the Yang Mills gauge field dynamics as you know the the Lagrangian density is you're, you're just going to integrate the the field the field strength squared the norm squared of the field strength but in um in the field strength is a two form if you in four dimensions if you split two if you you, you can split two forms into um self-dual and anti-self-dual under the Hodge star pieces. And this is exactly the splitting between the left-handed and the right-handed SL2Cs. Um, and so the, the right self-dual ones are, I would call it, call them the ones that, that just transform under the right-handed SL2C. The left-handed um, two four, sorry, anti-self-dual two forms then transform under the other SL2C, or you can, it's a matter of definition. And so it, it turns out that since the um, you can you can you you can actually express the Yang Mills action just using the self dual or just using the anti self dual piece because the the difference of the squares is actually uh, is a topological invariant so so doesn't um, when when you vary the action to get the Yang Mills equations you don't see the difference at all you only see the sum so you can you can work with just one or one or the other. So there are there is this kind of chiral way of writing down the Yang Mills action, and then I, I don't want to. It would take too long to say, to say this. I mean, uh, you you can do something very similar with general relativity. You can write it in a purely chiral way, and this is related to the story of Ashtakar variables. There's a very um, beautiful recent book of Kirill Krasnov where he he goes through this and, and explains the story in de in detail. Okay, so so that's. Just, just one point is, is that what we actually, the kind of space time as opposed to internal symmetry part of, of the standard model in gravity, you know, normally you think of it in a parity invariant way, but it, um, there's, you, you can just work with right handed variables. And then if you want to get true unification, you want to not just, you want space time symmetries and internal symmetries, um, to get unified well in th this gives you some interesting new way of doing this where the space time symmetries are coming from one of the sl2c's and and the other sl2c is an internal symmetry so if if you go back and look at standard euclidean space-time twister geometry 
where, where both of the SU2s are acting non trivially, one of them, it, they're not both. Um, let me see if I want to get this. Yeah. So, so, so both of them are now acting. If you go to, to standard Euclidean space time twister geometry, you've got two SU2s acting non trivially. One of them is going to wick rotate to a space time SU2. It's going to be rotations. The, the other, though, the SU2, the left SU2, using this alternative work rotation is, is going to, is going to act trivially on space time. So it's, you can think it, it's going to work rotate to an internal symmetry. And, and th this is the kind of, that this is possible is, is it something which, you know, I'd wondered about, you know, <laughs> decades ago, I wondered, and, and I, for many, for also for decades, I convinced myself that that made no sense that you couldn't possibly do that, but the, the argument is here is that you can do that, and I've been trying to explain why. Then the um, just just for the rest of the internal symmetry is that this is what I was writing about in this Euclidean twister unification picture. You've got a um, there's an SU three that appears naturally if you in the twister geometry. If you look at if you just think about what PT is, it one way of thinking it it, it, it had you can think of it as this this coset space and so if in, in, if you kind of work up on pt you kind of have an internal an internal symmetry which doesn't move the points around on it but moves the but it gives you moves the bundles over it around and that's that that gives you u1 and su3 which are kind of the other groups you need to do um to get the standard model and so anyway that so that's pretty much the end of it's the end of the talk and, and now so i'm um, in the middle of all this, I'm trying to write a longer version of that short announcement paper, giving de it's kind of much more details of of what I've talked about about here. And then, at, and then once I get that done, I want to return to what I was the ways I was thinking about this Euclidean twister unification. But now there's kind of a new perspective which I didn't have a few years ago on this, and and uh, and I want I think I, I hopefully can things that were bothering me about that story before that I didn't quite know what to do with. I'm hoping that make some progress on that but but i guess that's that's the end so so so, th so thanks yeah. that's it thanks. yeah thank you so much for a fascinating and a deep lecture i think there's a lot to absorb and comprehend thank you again very much the talk is open to questions please so maybe while we wait i could just ask you so we have seen in, in, in as internal symmetries u1 SU3 and SU2L for presumably for the weak force. Would you not expect on the space time side also, apart from SU2R for general relativity, another U1, another SU3? It's sort of there'll be a balance then, isn't it? Um, well, I, I think at least the, the way I, I've been thinking about a unified theory, which may or may not be the right way to think about it, is to is I've been thinking purely purely in in in, in euclidean space-time and, and i guess this is a, a bit of a philosophical mm. point that you know and maybe to say something about the philosophical point i mean i started my career doing uh lattice qcd calculations doing actual computer calculations and then it, it was very very clear if you're trying to do a calculation in you know in in, in yang mills theory or a non perturbative calculation for qcd you have to do it in Euclidean space. It's, I mean, you can, at the end of the day, you, you may want to, you may or may, you may or may not be, want to do some, you know, analytic continuation or some wick rotation, but the theory itself is written down purely in Euclidean space time. So yes. I don't, um, yeah. So from my point of view, the, the, the underlying quantum field theory, you, you know, is, you can think of it as as a purely Euclid, Euclidean space time object, yeah. and yeah, and and, and this this is the symmetries I'm seeing there. So, um, thank you. But yeah. so, so, would you conclude that in this picture there are four fundamental forces and no more? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think one of the amazing things about this picture. So, so this actually, this is actually kind of telling you what I think <laughs> experiment has unfortunately been telling you for forty years is that. There, there aren't other degrees of freedom besides it's the uh, standard model degrees of freedom. And what, that, what that, is spin 3-3 three, three doing? I mean, that's a very interesting space. Um, 
if it had a common center one one then it would be like a space time with three spatial and one time like direction and the other one is some space with three time like and one yeah. space like that does this look good to you or what what is happening with spin three? I, I i have no idea i mean it's, it, it, it's very very weird i mean it's true for both spinners and for um for twisters that the um the natural real form the kind of obvious real form is just does not we're not seeing anyway that has no obvious relation to me to to physics that the the things that we're seeing in physics are these these two kind of exotic real forms Mm -hmm. um and and the relation between them so um yeah that that other thing i i know that you know in practice the people who um you know who do twister strings and and are trying to use twister methods to do to compute amplitudes they they find that you know these these exotic these two exotic real forms are very bothersome things to deal with so that so so they actually do their computations and using that that three three real form and um mm -hmm. And then try and analytically continue, but that that's purely, a, you know, technical. I mean, that's just because it, it's a technically the simplest. But um, yeah, I don't, you know. Anyway, maybe maybe there is, you know, thinking about the three three form gives you some new piece of structure, which um, you know, it, it, it is going to be important in the story. But I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, I was uh, I've been toying with that Spain three three is some way of bringing together the weak force. And general relativity. That's yeah. why I asked you. Yeah. Th anyway, that's probably speculative. So I'll go over to Tavian. The next question, please. Tavian, go ahead. So I my, my question is hopefully a simple one. Could you go to slide four, please? Could, I'm a little bit puzzled. Oh, ah, that's right. Yeah, click through it. To sorry, yeah, yeah, okay. You get the whole thing. Oh, okay, yeah. Enough. That's fine. The matrix there is trace free. Is that correct? Um, the X naught and X three components look similar. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. There's a typo. I think. Fine. I was hoping it. Yeah. Was Fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank, thank you. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that should be. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thanks. That's a typo. Not to yeah. worry. Slide nine, then, please. Uh, Is that the same? Yeah, same typo. Okay, Fine. same that's, typo. Sorry, <laughs> thanks question. so much for noticing that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Tavian. Uh, let let them please go ahead. Um, hi. Uh, uh, yes, I had a question about the. Um, well, for, first of all, thanks for the beautiful talk. I, I really thought that was a really, really, really good talk. Um, I wanted to uh, try to understand how to interpret. Um, the fact that, like you were saying, you have this nice holomorphic manifold, the uh, the the the, the two-four uh, uh, Grassmannian, the grass, the um, wind, but yeah. then but then instead of taking the usual holomorphic tangent bundle, you were saying you, we, we're going to take this um, this one that's the tensor product of the spinner and the, the right spinner and its right. complex conjugate. Um, could I, so at first I was worried that that maybe was kind of doing violence to, you know, that we went to all this trouble to have a nice holomorphic manifold. And then would that, would choosing a kind of non holomorphic tangent bundle be somehow conflict with that in ways that would cause problems. But then I, then I was thinking, uh, so this is a question about whether you think this is a, an okay way to think about what's going on. So then I was thinking, okay, but then, you know, sometimes in complex geometry, we, we have a complex manifold, but then in Hodge theory, we have P comma Q forms, which have sort of P holomorphic disease and, and, and Q anti-holomorphic disease. And that, that's, 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 uh, still works very nicely. So could this be kind of like a spinner, almost like a spinner version of that, where this is kind of a, a one the tangent bundle is, is like a, a bundle of one, one one forms but with respect not with respect to the vector but res, the vector index but with respect to its sort of the spinner the spinner index is that is that 
is the, well, is, is the is the picture that it might still be still still have still have uh be in a sense respect holomorphicity but but just a different well I, I, I don't know. I, I think what, what's striking me, I mean, the longer I, I started out, you know, kind of thinking about, okay, well, I'm going to reinterpret the, you know, the, the, the beauties of um, holomorphic geometry and analytic continuation this way. And I'm, I'm becoming more and more convinced that what I'm actually seeing is a, um, it, 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 is that, you know, for, for this, for thinking about space time, the, um, yeah. This holomorphicity and analytic continuation is leading. Is you're not really um, so, so 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 what what you're not actually this analytic continuation. You know, it's it's not this wick rotation is something different. It, it maybe you shouldn't really think about it as analytic continuation. And the this beautiful story about analytically continuing between these real forms and about analytically continuing and analytic continuation twisters is, you know, that may actually be, well, yeah, anyway, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing some, something really quite different. And I started to realize this, so, you know, I'm, I'm talking to some of my algebraic geometry friends, and if you talk to algebraic geometers who are very algebraic, they don't, uh, <laughs> you know, if you're doing something non-holomorphic, if you have something in its conjugate, they, they immediately get confused and have no idea what's going on. So, uh, but I really, th this actually is, a, a, this different kind of geometry is not the kind of holomorphic geometry that we're used to. And it, um, yeah, I, I'm still kind of in, in the middle of processing what the, you know, what the right geometrical picture is. I mean, I've, you know, you, you can see what's going on in twister space time. In, in, the, in, in the twister language, you can see what's going on for spinners. But, um, you know, if you try and really, if you try and think about gen a general manifolds, what is um, you know, what 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 is what is what are you really doing here? You're, yeah. And anyway, so this Wick rotated space time is is very much not the standard Euclidean space time. It's some it's a different gadget, and um, and and you know, but the the fact that you've got you've got a complex manifold and you're working not just with a holomorphic bundle, but you know, a, a product of a of a holomorphic bundle and anti-holomorphic bundle. That's not, you know, that that that's not 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 necessarily unpromising. I mean, you um, you 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 have some kind of splitting into things that are behaving nicely under holomor under under analytic continuation. But when you put them together, you know, two different things are going on. That's what's going on. Right, right. And yeah, you're, was, you're, you're right. Saying. I mean, you, you see that kind of thing in Hodge theory and. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like in Penrose and Rindler is all about taking ordinary differential geometry and rewriting it in terms of spinners. And this might almost seem like if you if you kind of tried to do the same thing with Hodge theory, there would be maybe some other sort of P PQ forms in a more spinorial sense that 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 one of which you're using is the tangent bundle here or something. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, something I haven't talked about here. So I, I wrote there's up this um, there's another paper that notes on the twister P one and there's um. There actually is, I mean, there's this kind of amazing fact that this, this something like this Euclidean version of it, this, that, anyway, part of this, this Euclidean kind of story that I'm looking at um, actually appears, is, is kind of appearing to the number theorists when they're, they're doing Archimedean local Langlands theory. And anyway, there's, and, and, and there you can think of, anyway, Hodge theory very much, very much gets into it, but, but it has a whole new geometrical interpretation in terms of uh you know of, of bundles on this twister p1 but that, that's that's a different talk um maybe just one if, if, just one one final aspect of the same question is i don't know if you've had a chance to think about but no, normally a part of the twister story is that you know um uh di f massless fields of different spins get reinterpreted on twister space by the uh you know, solutions of the free field of the massless field equations of different spins get reinterpreted on the twister side as holomorphic functions of different right. homogeneities. Does that is that um is that is that still going to be is that part of the story? Do you know whether that? Well, I mean, yeah, that's or... that's that that's still true. Yeah, I mean, we, we, but but again, there you're using um you're using the whole you're using the holomorphic um 
you know, you're using the holomorphic tangent bundle when you make these um, wave equations. And uh, yeah, so 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 you, you do get a nice holomorphic story. I mean, that, that's that. The one thing that always bothered me about that story, though, is that, you know, th that actually is a beautiful story in Minkowski's many time. It's a beautiful way of writing um, is Minkowski um, space time wave equations and their and their solutions in this holomorphic way. If it, it it doesn't really, <laughs> but then w when you go and look at that in Euclidean space time, it, it <laughs> you're getting something different, or, or, or maybe even the way to, to to think about it is that well, well, it, it, real and Minkowski and Euclidean space quantum field theories are are very very different. So you know, you, you really in Minkowski space time you have these these solutions, this wave equation, which which you're um quantizing to get a quantum field theory but in in euclidean space time i mean like globally you don't even there really are no solutions to the to the dirac equation or maybe maybe a, maybe some a finite number of them or something so it, it it's really a completely that that beautiful story if you go and look at it in euclidean space time it, it's kind that's kind of not there anyway but um but yeah, but that that's still there. It's just I, I'm kind of I'm kind of doing violence to it by by this non holomorphic choice, and I'm getting something different in Euclidean space time. So it, it, as far as I know, it's a different story. Um, maybe the the other thing to kind of worry about all of this. One thing that's that's often worried me off and on is you know by, by doing this, I'm I'm doing violence to all of the standard. If, if you go and 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 pick up like Streeter and Whiteman, and you, and you look at all, all of the standard stories about, um, you know, proofs of the CPT theorem and spin statistics theorem, and all of these kind of wonderful general facts. I mean, all of these use the fact that you they they use this holomorphic representation of SL two C across SL two C. They 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 use this very crucially. So you know. Um, a lot of these very, very general theorems about, you know, what what the structure of Minkowski space-time forces upon you, uh, upon general quantum field theories in terms of space-time symmetry, you, uh, from, from this point of view, it, 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 it's not clear that you can, how, how or, or you, can, you can recover some of those very general theorems, but it's also not clear that you really want to. But again, th this is intended as a, this is intended to 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 not tell you about general quantum field theories. This is intended to tell you about you know some very specific quantum quantum field theories, in particular about the quantum field theory that show up in the standard model. So I'm not um if I lose these general theorems about quantum field theory theories in general when I do this, that that may not necessarily be a problem. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, uh, Rob. Please go ahead. Okay, um, the know. first question is on, on your slide number 11. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I think. Or maybe it was maybe it was 10 or 12. You had a... What um, was it? Oh, the previous one, that's right, 10. Yes, here. Uh, you've got to get this real representation, you define sigma between these two two copies of S plus S bar. Uh, the interchanges S and S bar says satisfy sigma squared equals one. Why can't sigma squared be equal to minus one? Because you, you just um, have to define it to be to square to whatever. Well, I, mean, I, I guess I'm not working. I'm not writing down the details of this, but I'm just I'm just saying that you can find an anti. I mean, you you cannot find an anti-linear map from S to itself that you know respects this SL two C that that um that that squares to one. But you but you can, and this is just just for a general story about a tr you know a, a real representation which is inherently complex. You can um. You, you can always by by doubling it you can you can put the the thing in its conjugate together and you'll get a, 
a real representation, but of twice the dimension. So there's no yeah, 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 SL two C yeah. has no real representation. Anyway, the the, the, the C two as a complex representation is not real representation in that sense. But S plus S S, if you put it together with a conjugate, you 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 can do it. Yes, that, I, I agree. You can get a real representation, but you can yeah. also get a quaternionic representation on S plus S bar. You simply have to define sigma squared equal to minus one, and then okay. it, it, it works. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not. Um... But that that means that the contradiction that you've got lower um, lower down doesn't happen. Which contradiction? So... But you, well, you you say it's a distinction between Minkowski and Euclidean space times, which now um, is a oh. distinction between real and quaternionic, and that distinction no longer exists. Well, I, I'm thinking of the. I mean, th th this was, this is intended more of as a as a side comment. It's more that yeah, there, the argument is is there really isn't a, you know s. The spinner representation is an inherently complex representation. It, it, yeah, you know, it, 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 it is not a it is not a complexification of some real thing in this case. I mean, you can you you can build something bigger by and and this in some sense is what people always do when they um yeah. So this is what this is just part of you know what what people always end up doing when, whenever they try and relate Minkowski and, and real spinners. They say, oh, you know, I've got to um. For various reasons to get to get our permission Lagrangian or, or or to get this or that that I want, I you know I have to double variables and th this is just kind of one explanation of that. But um, so you 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 can do this and maybe you can double variables and and get get something quaternionic in a different way. But I'm 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 kind of arguing that you know in, in, that uh. I'm trying to look for a point of view where I don't have to. When I go from Euclidean to Minkowski, I don't have to mysteriously number, um, in a mysterious way, double my numbers, my numbers of degrees of freedom in this way in order to to get something that sensible. I mean, so 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 I'm I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm just kind of just pointing to other people are, but okay, maybe they should be doing something different. <laughs> okay, and so then some uh, other points saying. So I guess the two the two big points I get from your talk are firstly that uh, that obviously space time you think of as right handed and the internal symmetries as as left handed. Yeah, uh, that was something that I used very much in my talk four weeks ago um, as a big point that were in quantum field theory you have to put the space-time symmetries on one side and the uh, internal symmetries on the other side. And the other thing I noticed, uh, you have a special direction in space-time. In, uh, in Euclidean space, yeah. In, yes, which also yeah. came out in as, as, a, as a major point in my talk four weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So so this. I mean, I've I, you know I think various people over the years have done various things related to this. I mean, one thing there's there's been some work on kind of some people have have often tried to think about kind of grab a weak unification of some of various kinds. Um, and you know, so some so, some parts of the story I think are certainly not not original. But I I, I do think that this. I mean, anyway. I, and I, I, I do think that there's something new here with it. This, this new, this that that this this new relation between Minkowski and um, anyway, a, a, anyway, the, 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 this new idea about what rotation is. And this is something which I, I, I would, which, which is new, which I haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you, Rob. Uh, let them please go ahead. Oh, I was just going to add one thing about Rob's first question, which was that when viewed as a representation of, you know, the Lorentz group spin three one, uh, the, the S and S bar are two separate irreducible representations. But then when viewed as a representation of the conformal group spin four two, they, the twister combines them into a single 
ear wrap of spin 4-2. And that, that ear wrap in the Lorentzian case is complex, not quaternionic, which I think might be maybe related to the, to the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and so that's exactly that. And um, what I was trying to say that if you uh, try and do Minkowski space on twisters, but you, you have the same kind of you have the same kind of problem as here that you have. Um, yeah, the twister space is is, is an inherently um, complex representation. So so you have to if you want to uh, anyway. So you get into the same story that you have to introduce the conjugate representation and 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 this is the. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it's a, it, it, it is a, there. There is really a beautiful relationship between the spinner story and the twister story, and, and they have a there. There's kind of the same story about real forms going on, um, in, in both of them. Thank you. Thank you, Davian. So I guess I'd like to follow up on a couple things that that have been said. Um, if I'm understanding correctly, you have Lorentzian. So, so Lorentz invariance, but not um, SO4 invariance in, on the Euclidean side. Well, you, you, you have SO4 invariance, but thinking of in terms of this of the sp spin four, but but one of the factors is acting trivially. <laughs> so you know, it's it's like only so S, spin four is two SU twos, and 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 the two SU twos are acting on R four, but w one of them is doing nothing. It, it, okay, let, let me rephrase. You made um, a comment to the effect that there's a preferred time direction in the Euclidean case. Am I understanding yeah. that correctly? Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Whereas there is no preferred direction on the Lorentzian side. Am I understanding that correctly? That's correct, yeah. So somewhere there must be a choice being made? Well, the... the, the I mean, I, I think the point is that again, you you can see this very nicely in the twister space story. And it, you know, if if you're just a mathematician and and you just do um, the Euclidean version of twister theory, then you just have this nice S four. It's got, and you know, it has no distinguished direction. Everything is it, 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 there's not nothing else except the what you're seeing there. If you do this, if you're a uh, Particle physics and, and you and you do the, the Minkowski, look at the Minkowski real form. Again, there, there, there's no distinguished direction. Whatever. If you look at either one of these, if you look at the Euclidean story or you look at the Minkowski story, there's no distinguished direction. You get a distinguished direction when you when you say, "Oh, I need to look at both." You know, if and 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 if I need to look at both because I've realized that when I try and do purely Minkowski quantum field theory, I can't actually calculate anything that my the thing the quantum field theories I write down don't make sense so I better go to Euclidean space then I'm going to get a preferred direction or if I'm I'm somebody doing Euclidean quantum field theory and I realize that wait a minute I don't just want to do statistical mechanics in four dimensions I want to actually get physics in three one signature then so 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 the the, the preferred direction in Minkowski space in, in Euclidean space time comes about because you have because because you need both you need you, you need to look at both of these and or another way of saying it is that and this is kind of what Oster Waldo Schroeder are already telling you they're saying look you can't you have to um if you want to actually get a physical state space out of your Euclidean quantum field theory you have to pick a distinguished you know re, 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 reflection in a distinguished direction that's the only right. way to do it okay thank you for the clarification yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tavian. More questions, please? Yeah. So in the meanwhile, I had a few things. So suppose a claim is made that only right-handed fermions take part in the quantum gravitational interaction. Do you think that's likely to be correct? And would there be some way to test it? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought about... Um... Yeah, no, so so, so there, there's 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 a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. I I, I don't know. I I haven't thought about that. I think, you know, at the stage. Yeah, I, I've 
I don't know. I I, I think the hope for the hope for this, if if this, um, the the hope of, of these these ideas about unification pursuing is that you um, you know that is that most mostly what you're going to get what you're getting here is a a different geometric language which which very nicely matches what standard gravity standard um standard uh and and the standard model and the but but the more ambitious hope is is not only does is because our, our problem is that we know that gravity and standard model are are kind of too good everything we see seems to agree with it with this particular theory so the um, the more ambitious hope is that there's there there are there are subtleties about those relations like for perhaps of uh, kind of you're thinking about where um that that, that were, were, were this formalism would would actually suggest uh something different than than the, than the usual theory but but yeah. i'm yeah I, i'm i'm making no claims about yeah. having any understanding of that I've, i yeah. <laughs> i i've been spending most of my time here actually trying to figure out how to stop <laughs> There are kind of o- obvious things from being wrong here you know how, like for instance how to make sure that you know weak this weak thing this weak su2 is really internal that because i know that if, if i do well you, you really want internal symmetries in the standard model to stay internal you don't want them mixing you don't want them mixing with each other you know you don't want them 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 not commuting with each other or not commuting with space time transformations because then all hell will break yeah, loose. Yeah, yeah. At, yeah at least for the weak interaction it could be that what we have been calling a internal symmetry su2l is along with gravity actually a space time symmetry in a higher dimensional space time or either spin 3 3 or 5 1 i mean uh, with the two extra dimensions probably being very small i mean i would have liked to be open to that possibility like because mm-hmm. the weak interaction while it's parity it's a space time symmetry so which space time is it it's it probably not a symmetry of the 4d space time but that's already gr so maybe there's something going on with the 6d51 spin 51 you probably might have seen that in your work no, yeah i haven't really thought about that and, and and i should say that i mean that the history of my career is i i've spent most of my career trying not to think too much about quantum gravity because i i didn't think i had any interesting idea about it and there seemed to be all sorts of other people thinking about it so i was but no i i i think what you're doing probably may have far reaching consequences to think of yeah. quantum gravity really or pre quantum gravity as a su2r part of su2l cross su2r and there also actually because the weak force really is electro weak i would ex- strongly expect a u1 on the right, gravity side su2r cross a u1 call it u1 grav which is a prediction act you're predicting a new u1 because that's the only yeah. way i see a balance between electro weak and what my you might call grab whatever other name you want to give to that u1 somehow yeah. i am uncomfortable that we have gravity weak unification but weak is already part of electro weak and you commented on this in your euclidean twister quantization paper that uh, and there is a there is some tension so i would be very happy if there's a u1 in the gravity sector yeah it's, it's possible yeah there's a lot um anyway the, the, you know as i was writing that 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 paper when i finished it you know it it, it really left me you know there there's there's some you know, i thought there was a lot of promising ideas there and things that you know looked like you could do something but um you know the, the more i tried to think about cert- certain things i i the more I, i still found them very confusing and one is about exactly how this electro weak is supposed to work and so I should say to to me I think that the really interesting question about the first interesting question about this is about the question about um the Higgs mechanism about the fact that there's something sp- specific about this SU2L is that it's um you know it it's <laughs> it, it it it's a spontaneously broken symmetry and this has always seen to me kind of closely related to the fact that I'm working with a um you know four dimensional geometry which has a you know where were you were you were you broken the symmetry by picking a a specific direction so i've i've always kind of felt that you know that 
that should be the story of the um, spontaneous symmetry breaking and the Higgs mechanism. But it, the way I was thinking about this before in that earlier paper, this this was never this was never really working out the way I wanted it to work out. And this this always things were getting mixed in there that shouldn't be. And I'm I'm kind of hoping now with this new perspective, if I go back to that, I can um, uh, yeah, thank some of the things that were bothering me before, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll see a way around. Yeah, so what what I would like to try is that just as uh, as the week comes from the spontaneous symmetry breaking of electro week, can we think of general relativity coming from a spontaneous symmetry breaking of SU two R cross a U one and a separate Higgs mechanism with the additional Higgs for this? Somehow that puts the two and also this question of why is the quantum gravity scale still so different from the electroweak scale? Because on the one hand, we are trying a gravity weak unification, and then we have all these oddities. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I haven't thought about that. Yeah, there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let them, please. Uh, I should unmute. Yeah, you, yeah okay. Uh, okay, to um, Maybe just I wanted to ask, uh, so now that I have a clearer picture of where the internal SU2 is coming from in this uh, approach, uh, did, do you have any updated thoughts or uh, actually maybe even not updated thoughts? How do you, how, at this point, how, how, what is your thought about how SU3 and U1 fit into the story? Well, n n nothing, Jude. Just a sen sense that, I mean, there is a natural, these, these symmetries appear very naturally if you look you know not if, if you're working with euclidean space theories and you decide okay i'm gonna you know i'm gonna take this philosophy of not just thinking about s4 but i'm gonna think about all s4 together with kind of all um complex structures at a point and i'm gonna make the bundle and i'm gonna so i'm gonna work with this whole complex object called pt up there and so if you go up and, and work on projective twister space instead of down on S4, these symmetries are are there. But I mean the other thing that you know I've I've never had a, a good answer, a good a good answer to is exactly this question of how, you know, how do you do everything we know about standard ways of writing down quantum field theories are, you know, are, before, before you say are, the next part of the answer, yeah. let me just make sure I understood the first part. So you're, you're saying that SU three is the kind of symmetry of, is the, is the point, point, point group, if you want that of the symmetries that preserve a point in, 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 C, in CP three. Is that, is that, yeah, point? I think, I mean, I did, I said this here. Yeah. I mean, it, it, oh, it, oh, yeah. it's, it's just this, it's just facts. So it's just this fact so that, you know, if you, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So 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 you have a, you have kind of a natural interesting U one cross S U three. P T is if P T is, is is obtained by 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 modding out in this way, then similarly. Yeah. So so it, it's one very natural way to write down P T is in mm -hmm. terms of these symmetries. So and then these are internal symmetries and the anyway. But 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 how do you this this still to to me is something I I never completely understood. How do you how do you relate Quantum field theories. If you if you decide I'm going to do Euclidean quantum field theories, how do you re re relate um, a story which is all which is a quantum field theories on S four, which you, are the standard story, to uh, to a stories on twister space? And and you know a, a lot of people have kind of worked on things like this, especially the people doing twister strings, especially and and so people and um, there, anyway, there, there's quite a few people who who kind of tried to write down um, quantum field theories on PT. Which um, are, are are gonna you know, which are gonna be interesting and, and, and give you the standard thing, give you the standard thing. So it, there's some sense in which kind of a whole, there is a Chern Simons theory up on on PT, which you know gives you the kind of quantum field theories you're interested. In, but it, but it's a holomorphic Chern Simons theory. So there's um, a, anyway, I, I I've never seen really a good. People have have worked on this, but I, I I don't know of a really anything that really kind of does. Anyway, does what I'm looking for, and, and I and I think there's really even how to think about what's the right way relationship between thinking of physics on S four and thinking of physics on PT in this traditional language. I'm not really a lot a lot of people have have done this in various ways, but um, 
I'm, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm still not, nothing kind of work of, of that that I've seen looks look like what, what, what I would like to be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, but thanks. Let them, thanks just to interject, this is what I, you know, I was saying. There should be a SU3 cross U1 in the gravity sector also. I mean, I mean that's what I was suggesting. Nope. A separate, a new SU3 and new U1. Yeah, okay. More questions, please. Yeah, there's some comments uh, in the chat. Um, uh, yeah. Marcello, I request you to please come online if possible. Yeah, actually. Or, or I can just respond to the question from the chat. I mean, th this yeah, is okay. actually something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah please so, go ahead. So, so, so this is interesting. I mean, this is actually how I originally got into the subject. So I, I started out, you know, as I said, working in lattice gauge theories as a, for my PhD and doing, um, and, and, you know, so that there's this beautiful, uh, lattice gauge theories get this beautiful understanding of, um, of the geometry of gauge fields in terms of this Wilson's formalism and links and plaquettes and, it's really a beautiful, beautiful story, and you have a very kind of nice discretized version of the geometry to work with, and you can use on a computer. So, you know, as I was working on that, I started thinking, well, what about what about fermions? I want to. What about the spinners? What about spinner geometry? And this is when I first started thinking and learning about spinner geometry, and it's been a <laughs> long, long, long career of learning more and more about spinner geometry. But um, it first, uh, yeah. So exactly these problems of you know, how do you put spinner fields on a lattice? And the um, and actually, one of the I mean, you run into various problems. One of the problems you run into is exactly this Euclidean problem. The problem that um, you know, if if you you only really can do these lattice calculations in Euclidean space, so you've got all these fermion. You've got the Euclidean versus Minkowski fermion doubling problem, but you've you've also got other you know, other problems about fermion doubling. And, and and maybe in some ways, the right way to say it is that if you think, if you try, if you think about trying to discretize geometry, spinners are very, very hard to understand how to discretize geometric property. What you can, what you do know how to discretize is differential forms. So you take, um, you know, if you have differential forms, you know, degree, you know, in, in degree one, they're just you can just use links. In degree two, plaquettes, whatever you you can naturally associate differential forms of different um, degrees with these geometrical objects of the same dimension. And there's there's a beautiful story and beautiful way of doing that. So, and but the the problem is that spinners spinners in some sense are square roots. That there's a way in which there's one way of thinking about it is that they're square roots of differential forms. So something new, something new is happening. Um, but you know, may, maybe the yeah. So so so, so maybe what what? Wait, may, but maybe this is telling you is that you you shouldn't you actually be thinking about a single generation of, of of spinners. You should be thinking about putting these things together into a tensor product of two of them, which are something more like differential forms, and that that, that actually um that's going to have a natural discretization. It's it's also going to um be what a uh, it's also going to get going to, going to give you the different kinds of spinners that we 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 see in in the real world. Um, there, there, there's other one, one other interesting thing I learned about this from thinking from talking to people who've um, of people like uh, Nitat Unsal and and others, his collaborators who've worked on this question of they were asking themselves, how do you take n is equal to four supersymmetric Yang mills and put it on a lattice? And what they found, you know, they <laughs> When, when I asked him about these Euclidean versus Minkowski problems, he said, well, I think, anyway, the, the, the main re reaction I got to that was, well, we, we, we don't really know. We just, we put it on Euclidean space and hope for the best in terms of the uh, relation to Minkowski. But the what, what he said is that what they see when they try to do n is equal to four super Yang mills in the, Eucl in the Euclidean's, on, on, on the Euclidean lattice is that they see something very much like this. They see that what 
anyway, they, 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 they see that what seemed to be space, what you thought were space-time symmetries actually, actually are Euclidean, actually become internal symmetries. There's this mixing of the internal symmetries of, of the problem, because there's n is equal to 4 there, with the um, space-time symmetry. So there's something a little bit of the same flavor as what I'm seeing in that problem. There's also something of the same flavor when you do um, topological quantum field theories. If you look at a n is equal to 2 supersymmetric Yang Mills or n is equal to 4 as a topological, as a very interesting topological quantum field theory, you find that you have to um, you have to mix that that the internal SU2 from the n is equal to 2 or SU4 from the n is equal to 4 get mixed with the space-time SU2. Um, and this is called twisting in that. So, so this kind of, when, when you're thinking about Euclidean space-time, kind of what you thought were space-time symmetries actually being internal symmetries and, and a weird interchange happening between the two of them it, it is really not unknown. It, it, it does appear in this lattice context and it does appear in topological quantum field theory context. Thank you. There's a remark by Rob Wilson that discretized spinners is exactly what my talk was about. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> Greg, Greg Trailing, would you like to say something, please? Okay. <laughs> Greg? Okay, I'll wait for him. And then uh, Tony Bell has a question. Any thoughts on the Clifford algebra CL4, given that bivectors in CL13 give you the Lorentz algebra? Well, CL. Well, so so, so there's this there's this whole story of um, <clears throat> spinners and twisters and and their and their real forms. Um, you 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 have kind of the same story actually. There's an interesting, you, you have an interesting story, same story at the level of, of Clifford algebras that did the, if you, the Clifford algebra, the complexified form of the Clifford algebra is kind of simple. It's CL, the, the four, CL of four over the complexes is, is just, um, what, what, which is, it's, um, yeah, so it's, it, Yes, yeah, so so, so it, it, it it's just four by four complex matrices. If you complexify the, the four dimensional Clifford algebra, it's four by four complex matrices. But it has these different real forms, and um, in the the two two real form again, exactly it's, it's exactly the same story. It's two by two. Um, oh, now you get four by four real matrices. But then, it, 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 and it, if you look at the um, Euclidean story. It's just what you just get is you get you get two by two. It, it's quaternionic. You get two quater, two by two quaternionic matrices. So that's what if you mean CL four, the real one. It's just it's two by two complex matrices. But but the the, the one three signature is actually very weird in terms of real Clifford algebras. It, it actually depends whether you're doing one three or three one. If you're doing one of them, depending on your conven conventions, you get four by four real matrices, and this makes it obvious why you why you can have Majoranus. I would never want to think anything about Majoranus spin monitors, spin spinners. But if you if you look at if you if you take the opposite sign instead of Clifford one three one, you do Clifford th one three. You get you get back the two by two. Um, quaternionic matrices so there's a, so at the level of the real forms of clifford algebras depend upon you know there's a difference between signature 1 3 and signature 3 1 they're quite different which which is which is very odd but it but it, it's just um i mean it, it, it it's when when you want want to recover the um the rotation group or or or, or the Laurent Laurent the Lie algebra Lorentz group by looking at quadratic things, then you only need the even part of the Clifford algebra. And the even parts of the Clifford algebra, the story of real forms, it, it's the same for one three or three one. So it, it it's if you just yeah. look at these bivectors or, or the even things which are going to give you um rotations or the or, or Lorentz transformations, there's no problem. But if you look at um 
if you look at not just spinners but kind of pinners then you you see you're getting they have a completely different nature depending on the signature on the on the sign which is i don't know i don't know what to make of that okay thank you uh, michael could you please unmute yourself and ask your question or comment yes thank you very much to and 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 thanks very much to peter for a very rich and and, and very very fascinating talk um, I can't pretend that I got more than uh, overall sort of glimpse of the scenery. Uh, but the last point you made about the way that the spinners occur in the Clifford algebra uh, setting is um, particularly interesting, obviously, because it's something which Basil Hiley has has, has um, majored on very much in his work. Um, can you remind me, when the spinner occurs um, within the Bok periodicity and the Tower of Clifford algebras, is, is, it, is, is, is it in the 3-1 the or the 1-3? form i'm afraid i've forgotten which that was going to be a that was a secondary question though my, my, my first question was actually going to be a more naive one um which is the whole um this 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 whole obviously you know very very rich um spectrum of conceptual possibilities uh particularly involving the mixing of the internal and the um space-time symmetries um and and you know indeed this selection of the preferred direction in the in the geometry um what would you expect to be um the obvious um observational signature for this i mean what if we're just looking for the phenomenology uh it was devising observational tests of any of the ideas in this approach what what would be the obvious candidates to be looking for well i i yeah i mean i have uh... No, nothing to, to say there. I mean, if you just think again, it, it, this is this is. I, I think I was trying to ad address this before. Is that I, I'm still I'm. I, I'm hopeful that you can actually write down. I mean, I haven't I haven't actually written down a real theory here. I've just talked about the symmetries, and you know, there's a obvious things you can do once you know the symmetries of something, and they largely determine what you can do with the theories. But I haven't actually done this, and and a lot of my attempts to do this have, have been more have been more at the level of struggling not with finding something new but was struggling with stopping um stopping the, the such theories from having obviously wrong properties obviously inconsistent properties so i wish i had an answer to this but no i'm 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 far from that well, i realize it was a naive question it, it, we're at the stage of, of a proto theoretical discussion uh, where yeah. the consilience of consilience of formalisms not yet at the stage of proposing a you know testable testable theory but okay well thank but, but thanks again very fascinating. Maybe, maybe I can make a quick comment about the bot periodicity. Thing. Yeah, yeah. That was a bot period periodicity. So bot periodicity, it, it, it's the story is very similar to with um. There's this so standard same thing about, about complex versus real. That the, exactly. the 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 complex story is, is actually very simple. That the you know the the, the Clifford algebras are, are periodic. You know, Clifford algebras of the same of different signatures are all the same, and Clifford and and for the total. And, and then Clifford algebras in, in different degrees, they um they have this. Yeah, if you increase the degree by two, you you you, you get some you get something that's essentially isomorphic. So so there's only kind of there's only two different things, and it depends upon the um whether you're an even or odd dimension as you change the dimension. Now, and, and then Bob periodicity tells you that that's related to the fact that the um uh yeah you know, if you look at the hom the homotopy groups of of large mm -hmm unitary groups there there also have this twofold period periodicity you know pi three and pi five and et cetera right? the same but um but it um the the real the real story again is much more complicated whenever you mm -hmm. have these real forms it's it's much more complicated and and the story is has always been very intriguing about the bot periodicity story there there you get an eight dimension you get an eightfold yeah. periodicity Yes. And, um, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And so you get so the you see these patterns that when you look at Clifford algebras that things yes. are repeating, yes. you know, with period eight, and yes. um, and and it's just the way the periodicity works out, you know, in this kind of, you know, if you you divided everything then into kind of eight possible categories, well, yes. the um th three one and one three end up in two different, yeah, 
two different categories, you know, mod. That's mod exactly eight. what I thought. That was my reflection. Yeah. And that, that's exactly yeah. how it shows yeah. up in Basil. Because Basil, of course, uh, it is precisely the real in the in the in the real you know the real setting um the setting of the real algebras um that that his construction is proposed so so it is this eightfold periodicity that's the one that he's interested in the the one that involves going into the reals rather than the complex um uh, yes so i think you end up looking at the the difference between you know in pq signatures the difference between the two the p and q and you're looking at that mod eight and i think it's right that that ends up being different and, and, and anyway, yeah, I mean that, that's what happens is you end up three one, you know, signature three one and signature one three. Clifford algebras are they're just different they're different, they're different levels in the uh, in the in, in the, the in the eightfold way in the eightfold way they're yeah. different things. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, well, thanks once again very much for that elucidation. Thanks. <laughs> is it possible to combine CL one three and CL three one into a CL three three? Again, you know, going back to the signature three three, uh, <laughs> I, I ha haven't thought about such things. So. Yeah. Okay. And uh, another question was from the point of view of unification: Is there a larger symmetry group in which we can embed the SU three U one SU two L and SU two R? Well, it, it, I think that the twi from the twister point of view, there's a bigger, you know, the the, the okay. Well, I, I think one, one interesting thing I say is from the twister point of view, there, there's a, you know, you, you have the symmetries of this four-dimensional space. So there's an SL4C acting, okay. right? Okay. And, 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 and that, but, but, but you kind of understand, but, but that, that's acting on the complex case when you, when you fix real structures that, that you're, you're, you're looking at these subgroups of SL4C and those subgroups are the conformal groups. So you're not. For each real form, you're not seeing anything bigger than the conformal group. Um, mm -hmm. But the, I mean, the other interesting thing about it is this: this, this is all, I think, a very beautiful story about the relationship between real, complex, and quaternionic. And there's mm -hmm. an obvious question: what about octonionic? What's the? Mm -hmm. And I guess that's part of your title of your series. So maybe right. somebody. And I've so, you know, and then it's, and then I think in the. So this is just the point of view that instead of C four, you know. And I've been, th I like, instead of thinking of C4 as R4 or as H2, what about it thinking of the C4 of twisters as the Octo as the octonians? Can you get, um, and that, yeah, I'm, I keep hoping that somebody with more wisdom than me about octonians will tell me so that this has some relation to what I'm thinking about, but, um, it's still, anyway, and, and they're, yeah, they're tantalizing that's... ideas that that, about that, but nothing, nothing solid. A very interesting question. I fully agree with you. We have Roger's talk was on twisters and split oxonions. I, I must confess, I still don't know, understand his picture well. Maybe you understand that better. I think you had come for Roger's talk. I think. Yeah, yeah I, I've, I've, I've heard some of that, and it's um, I don't know. I, I, I think. Yeah, I, I can tell that, you know, what he's doing there, he has some new ideas and what he's been doing a lot it, you know, has been to try to to deal with this question of the inherent chiral asymmetry. I guess he calls this the googly problem of the uh, of the twister formalism and to try to, you know, to, to, anyway, to, tr to try to, but I think from, I think a, a lot of what historically people have been trying to do is to say that, you know, is to think of gravity, that, that wait a minute, gravity is a parity invariant theory and, and we we so we, we need both self-dual and anti-self-dual we need to, to really talk about conventional gravity we this um chiral asymmet this inherently chiral asymmetry of uh twister theory is is a problem and what can we do about it i mean i'm i'm hopeful that that, that, that there's an alternative point of view that the, that the, the chiral asymmetry is a good thing um, i agree with you but, totally because if we are trying gravity weak, I think we are best off thinking that gravity is the right chiral part of the unified thing of which the weak force is the left chiral part. That somehow would seem to make much more balanced sense than having gravity as a parity symmetric theory. Yeah, anyway, but 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 that unfortunately is still to, to I mean I, I don't have a, a, a unfortunately a specific proposal a specific theory I can write down that input that 
does does all this the way you want. But um, mm-hmm. I, th- I think you know this picture I've been looking at may, um, is promising that you know that, that, that you might be able to write down such a thing. Mm-hmm. I yeah yeah I agree. Uh, Greg has a comment. My paper on the metric scores y- metric scores yields a very simple method for classifying the differences. I'm afraid I don't understand what context was there. So maybe if someone understands, you can comment on this or, or Greg, if he's around, please explain what you have written. Okay. So it's uh, yeah 11.30. Any more questions, please? So... If not, then uh, thanks so much, Peter. It's been wonderful because there's a lot to think about. And I keep thinking that looking through this series, the various talks, that we are perhaps in the correct ballpark, you know, maybe with twister quantization, with the octonions, with the exceptional groups, and this handedness of space-time. I'm hopeful that this is the right way forward in unification. So... Michael and I have decided to continue the series next year. We have the last talk of this year next week by Latham Boyle. And we start sometime in February, mid-Feb, with Roger Penrose on collapse mm-hmm. of the wave function and some then other timetable. Michael, you want to say something? Uh, no, just, just uh, to say once again, uh, thanks to Peter for a fantastically rich exposition and, and a very good discussion a uh, very good very wide-ranging discussion and uh, indeed uh, we have taken the decision we're going to continue for the year ahead and, and indeed I hope even beyond that uh, and we hope to have the list of the first speakers together um, for you fairly soon um, in fact uh, can you just remind me to Jinder I'm sorry w- when did when did we say that we were going to have our next week next week next week our next we... meeting our call about that okay right it's just I'm away at the moment. I'm actually in Italy, in uh, the little town yeah. of the Stoyer in Italy, as you may have heard at the beginning. But I should be back. I should be back in Bristol by then. So um, we'll, we'll uh, as I say, shortly after that, and certainly before Christmas, we hope we'll be able to give people the list of the, at least the first, uh, uh, the first uh, seven or eight uh, so uh, talks of next year, next season. Yeah, and yeah, so some of our friends who are here haven't commented. If you want to say something, please, you are very welcome before we close off. John, it's good to see you again, John Barrett. Uh, I remember your nice talk on non commutative geometry. Hi, yeah. thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm, I have to apologize for missing the talk. Unavoidably, I just came in at the end. Um, I shall watch the recording with great interest. I'm yeah. actually just in the middle of writing out a proof that Lorentzian quantum gravity and Euclidean quantum gravity uh, give the same partition function by rotating the contour of the function integral. So oh. that will appear soon, I hope, once all the little technical wriggles right. appear. Right. Um, how, how is it going with the cons Chamshedin program? They're not quite active right now. Um, yeah, I'm still I'm still working on that, but this is more general. This is sort of quantum gravity generally, but actually oh. it uses uses those ideas. Um, so the second comment I want to make there was this debate about whether it's spin one three or spin three one. Yes, <laughs> which was a very interesting thing. And I actually went to a talk by Bryce DeWitt um, several decades ago, in mm-hmm. which he said uh, the only time that he and Cecile had a marital dispute was when they disagreed over the eigenvalues of the Dirac operator. (laughs) (laughs) After they both calmed down, (laughs) they realised that both of their calculations were right, and one had used spin 3-1 and the other had used spin 1-3. Yeah. But you (laughs) know, they really are different. At a deeper level, you know, if what if there was a quote-unquote a bigger space-time with three time-like and three space-like <laughs> directions. <laughs> and somehow we are in the one time-like and three space-like part. And there is, <laughs> quote-unquote, a mirror which has three time-like and one space-like. It keeps coming up. This spin three, yeah. three keeps coming. I'll let them. Good. Uh, please go ahead. <laughs> I unmute you. Yeah. 
Oh, well, that was a good story. Uh, uh, and, but I also, I'm just curious to hear from John, what, what, uh, so uh, that that's the the first comment you made about proving the equivalence between the Lorentzian and Euclidean partition function is uh, an interesting one, uh, especially since the Euclidean partition. I usually think of Euclidean quantum gravity as neither bounded above or below. So how do you how do you deal with that? Yeah, th there is the the conformal um, factor problem, um, but you'll notice that when you um, derive that, it only it's only a problem if you admit um, conformal factors of inf infinitely high frequency. But if you live in the real world where gravity has a Planck scale and a cutoff, then that ceases to be a problem. Mm -hmm. You mean uh, you, you mean you cut you cut off the you cut off the path integral at, at, at some lambda? Yeah, yeah. For example, if you have non commutativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> yeah. well that sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is that this is, you know, this whole question about is it spin one three or spin three one, it's it's all very sensitive to that. Because once you couple in the matter and you do have a chiral integral, as I think we've been talking about, a chiral functional integral, um, you have to get the spin three one or spin one three right. One of them works and the other one doesn't. Yeah. Because the KO dimension it to talk spectral triple language comes out wrong for one of them, and then you don't get a chiral uh, functional integral. So it really is crucial. Hmm. Okay, thanks. <laughs> very Can I just pop in to say th thank you very much indeed for that, John. That was a. I, I might I make a suggestion? We perhaps, um, um, because there's no reason. Uh, I, I correct me to gender if if you have a different point of view. But there's no reason why the Osmo chat room shouldn't be made available to people who want to. Um, discuss some of these uh, points arising, such as uh, mm -hmm. this very interesting point. Uh, if, if provided, you let us know in advance when you want to meet there, and mm -hmm. uh, then we, one of us, um, myself or one of my colleagues in Bristol, uh, can be there to to, to let people in. And um, yeah, if they want to have some more slide discussions, we, 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 we would, of course, record those conversations with your permission and add them to the Osmo archive. Um, yeah, alongside. so that's a very good point, Michael, because I've been also wondering or worrying that we have had quite a few talks which have similar beautiful physics content, but yes. we are not cross-talking. Uh, I, I absolutely. I, this was one of the things I was going to raise with you. In fact, when we had our planning discussion in a week's time, but since it's come up now, um, I've seen I've seen a reason why we shouldn't um, deal with it in principle. I'm I'm all for having um, a system, provided we can, um, provided it, it as it were, it it, it can be done um, so that it doesn't become completely freewheeling and ad hoc. Because obviously we would like to keep track of these discussions. Uh, that's the whole yeah, but but there's no reason at all why people, if like John, for instance, um, would would like to just make a short a shorter presentation on this recent development in his work in non commutative geometry. Perhaps once he's you know once he's he's finished his work on the on the proofs, and anybody who wants to come and listen to that and discuss it. Uh, could do so in the in the context of you know of a side meeting uh, for which we which we would advertise obviously the time uh, on the uh, on the, you know the time for people to meet in the Osmo chat room um, and this would be alongside and in addition to the main fortnightly seminars. Yeah, so something you know, so someone a super user should go and listen to all the recordings. Find out the commonalities and present <laughs> the debate. You see, uh, it's uh, there, it's th there. thank uh, you very much for that suggestion. Uh, yeah. Yes, that bango my Christmas holidays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have the expertise to do that, but I can. Well, I, say, I certainly don't. But, uh, but I, 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 I can certainly make that. You know, if you, if you want to pick up. Well, it's it's like, like, the question of searching uh, keywords and things like that. Start, if you all start well, creating, Claudia, you want to say something? <laughs> well, Tashinder, you, you you know my little little project to write these comparison papers, right, between yes, different yes. theories. Yeah, please help us. Please help us. Listen to all the books <laughs> and write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, I think it would be much space? more. Sorry. Sorry, I think Claudia, it would be much. Around. Yeah, I think it, I think it would be much easier if people got together and wrote a network of these uh, kind of articles themselves, because 
I cannot get a, become an expert in every approach there exists. But yeah, I'm thinking if we all work together in a big collaboration, mm -hmm. we might solve the unification problem, you see, because every talk, many talks have given very, very important inputs, but they touch different aspects of the big problem. And uh, uh, I mean, well, what I think we yeah. might do. So, uh, Michael. Is, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, um, yeah, so, so just, just. Sorry, okay, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, I went to. I mean, I, I mean, this is this is just a, a heads in. I mean, something I'm anyway planning for next year is to write a proposal for a cost action in that direction. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, mostly relevant for the Europeans mm -hmm. um, because those are like these network grants. But uh, I think also non-Europeans can be affiliated and like take part in these events. Um, if you go through the recording, yes. that might be useful. You know who the speakers are, what they talked about, what they're working. So our cost action could be built around that, actually. That would be one way yeah. uh, to back together, yes. Michael, you're saying something? I was simply going to suggest that we, we perhaps should... Uh, um, not immediately, because I think we we need we need just to, to to think perhaps over the next week, you and I, as to what's the most effective way of uh, of doing this. But my thought would be something like this: that we should um, we should open an invite we should open an invitation to a discussion on the site on the you know, on the um, Osmo um, site. I don't mean the chat room; I mean on in the the list, the Osmo um, uh, the Osmo list. Um, for people to suggest topics which they think naturally uh, have arisen uh, from the first year of, uh, of, mm. of talks, um, particularly where there's a, a commonality, uh, some mm. particular theme that has emerged in more than one talk, which they think mm. should be pursued further, and to suggest, make a, a short list uh, of topics which they would like to see pursued. Um, mm. And then we could invite people who feel they've got something to contribute uh, specifically on those topics in perhaps in a much more informal discussion than an actual presented to seminar talk and we could then draw up a program of supplementary shorter meetings uh, on the osmos on the osmo in the oh, sorry in the osmo chat room um at at agreed times um to which anybody who wants to come along could could listen in to those discussions and i see no reason since since um, the osmo chat room is there and available basically 24 7 uh why we shouldn't be putting it to to more use i agree i agree I'll, uh, you and i need to work on that come yes. up with the, also the the intermediate fridays on which we don't have the osmo talks that, be that's exactly what I was thinking. That would be a very sensible use, I think, perhaps in, as a first as, attempt as a, to get this supplementary program going. But mm -hmm. let's talk about that, and we could then sort of make that. Um, we could start that in tandem with next year's main program. Great. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yes, mm -hmm. great. So, all right. So, if uh, there may be any further comments, or we can wind up. It's been good as always. We we like to engage the speaker and thanks, Peter. We really had a good time with you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. It was very very good. Very good. Good to, good to do this. Yeah. All right then. Bye. I'll Bye. log out. Bye bye everybody. Good night. You have to sign off this time, Tejinder, because you're the. Um, oh yes, yes. So, so I'm so. Uh, signing out now. Good night. Okay. Thanks.